Tim Linder here. I'm going to talk to you about Photoshop and what to expect when you first open it. Maybe run, through, run you through the interface a little bit. So when you first open up Photoshop, uh, you're going to get this welcome screen. Uh, you can just kind of click through it and choose next. Uh, you, can, you can learn different tutorials and things like that from it. Uh, uh, from, from this little what's new screen here. You can also get to the home screen here that allows you to open up your Lightroom photos or shows most recent work and things like that. Or you could just create a new document and open up the new document screen uh, as well and kind of get in here, which we'll, we'll, we'll talk about here in a minute, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and create, now I'm inside of Photoshop. But to be honest with me, I don't like to go through all of that uh, all of those screens before I get to you know open up a new screen. So really, when I first start Photoshop, um, I, I go into the preferences under general and I turn off um, that skip. Where, where is it here? You where is it? Auto show the home screen and I and I quit that. So when I when I launch Photoshop, uh, really what I get is this. I'm just right into Photoshop. I don't have to work with all that other you know C tutorials or all those other things. Um, uh, before I get to really the meat of things inside of Photoshop. So I kind of turn that home screen off and you can always go back to file new or file open most recent files or anything like that as well. So inside of Photoshop, what we first see here is the um, the interface and we've got our tools all over here on the left side. And if I roll over any of the tools, um, it can give me a little, little video of what that tool does. It can tell me uh, what the quick key combination is to get to that tool. So I see a little A there next to the direct selection selection tool and if I go up here and use to the to the move tool I see a little V icon next to that so if I was over here and hit the V key I jump to the move tool or if I hit the A key I jump down to the direct selection tool so it gives me a little bit of an idea of what that tool is about and the quick key selection to get to it you could turn off those videos or these little pop-ups if you wanted to in the preferences as well so this is your your tool your tools and give you kind of the whirlwind uh, view of the tools here. And so any of the tools that you were to select on up here is the tools option bar. So you get the options for that particular tool. When you select it, it's going to show up here at the top of the interface. You also have all these other panels over here on the left side and bins for these panels. So you see they all have these little folders and tabs that I can click on for layers and channels and paths. And we'll talk a lot about what those are, but really what I want to tell you about is how to kind of move these around and bring up panels that maybe you don't see. So underneath window, you can see these are all the available panels that you might have access to inside of Photoshop. So if somebody's talking about the glyphs panel and you don't see it readily available in your interface, you can just go down and click on glyphs and that panel will pop up and here's the glyphs panel right here, right? So you'll notice there's different ways to view panels as well. I see tabs and I see icons over here, okay? And you can change them around to however you want to view them. So if I say, you know what, I want to see the glyphs instead of as a little icon right here, I wanted a tab up here, I could just take this tab and tear it off and drag it right over here and now the glyphs panel is in a tab there. Or if I say, you know what, I want the gradients to be uh, pulled out here. I'm going to move this out so it's kind of this floating panel here. And I can also click on the fly out menu and choose different options in here for this panel. And I can also click on this little arrow and collapse it to an icon if I want to, or an icon with a one word description if I want to. So I can change these panels around however I want and I can take them and put them in different places. So if I want that icon to be kind of in this icon strip, I can do that. I can give any of these interfaces different, you know, these panels more space. So if I say, you know, I like the icons, but I want an actual icon with some words there. And the way I like to use Photoshop is I actually go through and I say, you know what, I'm going to open up all the different panels that I don't see. Uh, so I'll open things up, I'll bring open the navigator, I'll go to window and, you know, choose properties, all these different things. And I might move the ones that I like, you know, maybe over here into the, my, my icons uh, tray over here. So I have everything open all at once. And once everything will open all at once in the way that I like to use Photoshop with all the different panels and things like that, organize the way that I like them. Okay, and one of the ways that I like to do, I like to put up panels, I like to put all my swatches and my color over here. And up top, I like to have my layers front and center, channels and paths, all this space for all my layers. And then every other, you know, option I have as little icons right here that I can quickly go to it. That's kind of like how I like to use Photoshop. So if you wanted to, you could go to Window, Workspace. Once you've changed things around, notice that my Essentials 
workspace here is changed. This is kind of a collection of how different panels are open and where they're located and how much space you've given them. So you notice I have some workspaces up here called Tim and Tim's icons and those sort of things. So if I wanted to um, create a new workspace, I could do that, label it Tim's new workspace, keep all my shortcuts and menus and any of the toolbars changes that I've got. So now if I were to go to different workspaces like window, workspace, let's say I was going to do stuff in 3D, opens up the 3D panels and properties and things like that. So 3D and things like that, right? Or if I go back to window, workspace, Tim's new workspace, it goes back to the way that I had it before. Also notice that window, workspace, essentials, is also the way because I started in essentials and then I changed it to look like this. So I changed the essentials workspace to look like this and then I saved it as Tim's new workspace. So if I wanted to go back to the way that the essentials or the default workspace was from the very beginning, I could go down here and reset that essentials workspace. And now this is the way that it was when it very first started Photoshop. So, you know, you can use these workspaces. Uh, I often do, you can create your own. And these are just, uh, you know, if you're working in painting or any of these workspaces that are labeled that, it just brings up the different panels that might be indicative of the things that you might like to use if you're painting or if you're working in 3D or if you're doing, you know, photography type digital dark room work or something like that, right? And if you change those workspaces, these default ones right here, you can always reset them. Uh, reset them as well or you can save new ones if you want to so these are just different ways of moving things around within your interface inside of Photoshop so that you can get it organized the way that you like to now you could also you'll notice in my version of, uh, of Photoshop here everything is kind of nicely contained within this big application frame so if I move this out you can see I can see the desktop here behind it if I were to have a a um, let's say a web browser window open Notice I'm inside of Photoshop on a, on a Mac here. And if I look back behind it, my, my, uh, my web browser window is, is, is back there. You can also go to Window and turn off Application Frame so that uh, Photoshop isn't necessarily in a... I got it kind of closed here, my, my panels and windows. My, my machine is a little bit um, larger than what... Uh, my monitor is a little bit larger than what I'm screen capturing here. But you'll notice that my menus are here, but I can see back through them even though I'm still in Photoshop or if I go to file new document um, and create a new document or something like that, that file is kind of floating on every, on top of Photoshop's floating on top of all the other applications that might be be being used, you know, inside of uh, on my machine in general. So if you don't have the um, application frame on, you kind of you'll see back through it to everything else that's in your in your machine. Okay, so application frame, you know, if you like to kind of keep it nice and tidy and not be able to see what's going on in the background, you might want to have that on. Or if you like to jump back and forth between a lot of applications and have a lot of windows and just be able to click on those things and get to them really quickly, like, okay, I'm working in Photoshop. And if I want to quickly grab something off the web, I can just click on it, copy this image if I want to, or do a search and then quickly go back to Photoshop that way. So that's helpful sometimes to have the application frame on, sometimes a little bit more uh, complex and confusing, if you will. So something you might want to turn on and turn off as needed. So uh, another thing that you might like to take a look at is, I'm going to check, check my notes here. Um, Another thing that you might like to take a look at, I think I went to it a little bit in the be very beginning, is under the preferences, you can look and take a look at a lot of your different preferences over here. You can, if you click on any one of them, they're all listed here and you could go through and change around any kind of preference inside of Photoshop. We'll talk about some of these in particular in subsequent videos, but for right now, just so that you know where it is, um, you, can, you can find that. Now, another thing that you might do is you might go to File New and Create a New Document. Okay, so uh, it, under under File New, you can click from these different presets, or you can choose uh, a specific size that you might have over here. And we'll talk about that more in another video. But that's basically the the, the very basics of the interface: panels, menus up here at the top, tools that you can choose from, and those options that show up here at the top. And then also workspaces, which are collections of ways that you might have your interface organized.